webinar that uh, knowing your property and historically uh, as a history of the city, uh, maybe geographically, uh, you could able to have most common crises uh, in your hotel that could be uh, accident of the employee uh, or accident of the guest or flood in the basement or a heavy rain sometimes can cause uh, major impact. So this type of scenarios could be practiced within your team uh, in advance and you could able to mitigate or at least be prepared for these crises. If I can just add maybe one more point to what Mr. Nijar just said is, uh, yes, we spoke about accidents, floods, and internet, which are physical disasters in the property. Um, you know, since we live in the digital age, also, I think we need to, prepare it, to be prepared with um, uh, social media um, problems that can occur from an existing problem on property. Um, you know, something happens on property, immediately it's tweeted or it's uh, mentioned on Facebook and immediately this information circulates on all channels, on the social media channels. And that needs to be handled very accordingly. For us, it's a crisis. For everyone, I think it can be a crisis as well because uh, it can really affect the reputation of the hotel. Um, and usually this kind of information, uh, you know, grows like wildfire. It really spreads very, very quickly. And if it's not answered and handled accordingly, it can have some disastrous effects for the reputation of the hotel. So it's not always a physical problem. It can also be a social media problem. Uh, could you give uh, some couple of examples in your experience that you had handled uh, a crisis in the hotel level, which I'm sure it will be interested by our participants as well? Uh, yes, I mean, um, on property level, yes, a, a few fires, thank God, not major fires, but fire starts, which have been handled very, very effectively. Um, uh, when it comes to health and safety, definitely one of our, you know, uh, main issues in the hotel is also to ensure uh, that we look after special dietary requirements of, of guests and uh, sometimes this information is not communicated effectively or the guest doesn't realize that he's eating something that he's allergic to which can lead to severe trauma as well so that's also one new thing that maybe we didn't pay too much attention 10-15 years ago but definitely it's, it's, uh, it's very much part of our daily life nowadays to recognize dietary requirements of people and to act accordingly with some policy procedures please to make sure that no no um, you know casualty uh, happens um, social media as I said before based on a very very simple complaint uh, the guest uh, took it on himself to to tweet some very very aggressive uh, words he had quite a number of followers and he knew that when he was doing that so it was a very emotional reaction and immediately, um, you know, we got calls from everybody in the hotel on the regional level as well to deal with the situation because it was getting out of hand. So definitely the response then, there was very, very crucial. And uh, the crisis, you know, lasted for a few days, um, if not a week, where we met on a, on a daily basis in our crisis uh, committee room in order to deal with this matter because um, as I said before, this kind of information circulates very, very quickly and sometimes is uncontrollable. So it has to be stopped with the right words, the right message. Hence the importance of the communications person around the table, part of the committee, who really is trained and skilled to use the right words or the right uh, strategy in order to mitigate the uh, reputation loss there. Thank you very much. I think that's uh, clear for everyone that uh, you need to have a clear policy and procedures uh, for the crisis and you should able to train and have a skilled employees for any uh, upcoming scenarios. Uh, so our third question uh, actually given from the panel uh, of our group panel that uh, you had able to see the uh, global crises in your experience. What are the positive and the negative side uh, that had happened uh, in the hotel industry? What kind of factors you could able to see? 
Okay, unfortunately, I have more negative points than positive. Right. <laughs> but you can always look for the positive uh, points. Uh, if you don't mind, I will start with neg negative ones. Um, as we have seen in the past and as we see today, um, this kind of crisis has led to the bankruptcy of many, many businesses. And not only, not only hotels, but also um, a very uh, dire financial situations in the airline and travel industry. If we speak about our industry in particular, which is travel. Um, unemployment rates are going up uh, with countries having difficulty to cope with the compensation given to the people who have lost their jobs because it comes at such high numbers that uh, you know nobody was really ready to face this kind of situation if I speak particularly about the COVID-19 uh, situation and also it can also be the case when a crisis lasts longer than um, you know, what has been accrued for in order to compensate the employees. So that can also leave, uh, you know, the countries in some very dire economic situation. Um, if I speak about the personal point of view or, or, or people, particularly, uh, it can lead to depression. Uh, any job loss can, you know, lead to some severe uh, social insecurity. Um, amongst the family members uh, as well. So this is also something that should not be disregarded. And uh, unfortunately, also some redundancies. At the end of the day, any businesses uh, have to face the consequences of the crisis and to make sure that they can cope with the crisis and come out of it as quick as possible. Therefore, unfortunately, some redundancies sometimes have to be made in order to safeguard the business and to come out stronger out of this uh, of the crisis. So these are the main negative points that I can think of. If we think about the positive, what I've noticed uh, over the years is that um, the business bounces back uh, pretty rapidly, uh, but it's rarely a very steep recovery slope. It's a very, very um, uh, slow recovery uh, slope that you can, you can view. Um, and unfortunately in our industry, uh, it's, it has a big impact on the occupancy and the pricing in order to attract the guests back. You need to be ready to, uh, you know, have some very attractive uh, rates in place. And it takes a long time until the rates go back to pre-crisis mode, if they go back to pre-crisis mode. It depends really on the severity of the crisis and the length of the crisis. Um, so really that's where hotels and organizations have to come up with some um, you know, some added values uh, added to the prices, uh, maybe not necessarily lowering the price, but giving some good uh, added value to the guests in order to uh, give them the confidence that you like to welcome them back and that you really value their business. Uh, if I think of um, another positive point, uh, in particular with this pandemic that we're going through, uh, you can see it, I think, pretty much everywhere in the world where more than 4 billion people in the world are confined currently. So less traffic, less pollution. We have seen some very <laughs> blue skies in some very polluted cities in the last few months. So that's, I consider this is quite positive and hopefully we can learn out of it. Um, I think definitely it will change the way we travel for the years to come. This confinement uh, uh, that everybody is confronted to at the moment really makes you think about conducting business in a different way. Um, so definitely um, traveling will reduce, which means more maybe social time with your, your families and so on and in your own country. And again, less pollution. Um, and uh, in certain countries, of course, we all um, have read where this pandemic started with. It was, you know, uh, came from animal to human. So maybe it will change certain eating habits in certain countries and, uh, you know, be it really the, the key to the closure of illegal uh, animal trade markets. So I really hope that that would be one of the positive outcomes of this crisis in particular. Thank you very much. Uh, again, the outcome from this question, you could be able to understand that uh, giving uh, too much discount, which we call rate penetration, uh, which we'll be speaking in our next webinar, that it's not the key and it's not the right strategy to uh, to get the business. If opportunity is available, if demand is available, you could able to uh, come up with the rate. But if it's not available, 
just for the sake of the discount, the giving the rate is not the correct strategy. Adding value strategy is one of the positive signs. So you could able to add value means you could able to uh, allow your guests to come from outside to have a food with the pool access, uh, avoiding the going to the rooms. That may be a, a good strategy as well, as an example. So going to the uh, fourth question. Uh, meanwhile, I do encourage our participants to put uh, questions in their chat box, which in a while we're going to answer. Uh, fourth question will be, uh, what will happen after pandemic case? Now everybody is uh, looking after this question, what's going to happen post pandemic case? When economy uh, uh, will be back, how it will be back and how it will be uh, related to the hospitality sector. Well, uh, this is my assessment of the situation. Of course, it's maybe not uh, you know, the right one, but what I see and uh, coming on us in the future is really the spending power of the people will definitely decrease because uh, this is an, a crisis which has hit many, many people in many households to a degree which has not been seen for many years now. So I think the spending power will decrease. People will be much more careful before traveling. Maybe the holidays and the time off will be uh, done in their own countries. So before normality comes back, um, hopefully in the last quarter of uh, 2020, I think people will very much use the facilities in their countries before they start thinking of traveling. Um, maybe not only because of the money, uh, disposable income available, but also because of the uh, risk maybe, or the, um, you know, the, the safety precautions that are uh, still tested uh, around the world and may, maybe not guaranteed. So definitely uh, economically the spending power will decrease uh, before some sort of normality comes back. Um, I've read some reports that from experts that estimate that it might last even to 18 to 24 months before we see some uh, normal trading um, similar to the pre-COVID-19 uh, crisis. Um, economically also, I mean, stock markets are being hit, airlines are being hit as well. So definitely you will see some, uh, you know, some, we will have to wait for some recovery time before we come to some kind of normality. Um, even, I think uh, I read a report that um, budget airlines will be very severely affected uh, because of the social distancing that will be implemented in the planes. And we all know that budget airlines maximize their revenues based on a maximum load factor of their air aircrafts. So therefore, will it be sustainable in the future? That's a big question mark. Or Will cheap travel become more expensive in the future? Uh, that's also a big question mark. In hospitality, after COVID, uh, of, after this pandemic, I think if we really redefine many aspects of how people will use the hotels, um, social distancing rules are very much in our daily lives since a couple of months now, um, and it will not go away so fast. So already we're getting uh, some guidelines by our company and also by the government on how to prepare our, you know, our business for future guests, um, be it reduce capacity in restaurants, post sanitization of rules, um, etc. So definitely, we have to look at the full customer journey from the moment the guest arrives until he leaves, um, and 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 put the measures in place in order to give that, um, you know, um, satisfaction to the guest that he's staying in in a hotel which is sanitized and taking care of all these sanitation problems. Um, of course, this comes with an increased operational cost, uh, masks, uh, the gel, uh, uh, PPE equipment, etc. comes at an additional cost which need to be factored in. That's why forecasting expenses in the next few months will be very, very crucial uh, in order to um, ascertain what kind of um, PNL we can produce in the coming month. Thank you very much. This again uh, proving the point that please, dear hoteliers, be prepared on the upcoming uh, regulations, uh, new standards, 
that uh, will change uh, for coming weeks or months or year that uh, which we are have to uh, mandatorily uh, speaking uh, comply with and uh, this obviously will increase our cost uh, such as uh, cameras masks gels new standards regulation health and safety for the food pool beach uh, housekeeping so uh, these standards will come up so i do suggest uh, you to make a little bit of research and our previous webinar we also shared some uh, videos where you could able to see some companies already took an action uh, based on the uh, current uh, pandemic scenario and uh, they are adapting according to it so going to our last question uh, and after that we'll go to our uh, panel chat box to see uh, the questions we had been given by our participants so the uh, last question will be related uh, this article came from the panel as well, named Ismail Khan, uh, which he mentioned about the uncertainty rises in the global economy. The hotel industry is being hammered. What could be seen the strategy to prepare for such times uh, in the future, obviously? Uh, what can be implemented to boost the business after the pandemic? Well, I think we all agree that uh, the COVID-19 uh, is unprecedented times, um, which has caught by surprise many organizations. So I don't think we can really talk about the strategy because uh, really it caught us by surprise, as I said before. So I think one of the key here, what we can learn out of it, um, is that the survival of the fittest will be those organizations and those companies which have a healthy financial situation um to go through these uh, tough times and i think the cash flow is really the key at the moment uh, in order to safeguard you know the salaries uh, and uh, the operational uh, costs of the hotel so i uh, really i think if we can prepare something is really to be sure that uh, there are no unexpected uh, costs that come all of a sudden which bring down the total uh, organization and it's not only during this um, this pandemic that we need to be ready for that. I think, uh, um, you know, if, if, if I speak about our business in particular, uh, maybe it was not, uh, you know, as severe as the pandemic because it really affected only our business. But the Thomas Cook um, um, issue that uh, came up a few months back really also caught everybody by surprise. So if you have too much outstanding um you know or if your credit limit has been uh, exceeded uh, it becomes increasingly difficult to recover in during difficult times um it's already difficult during normal times so imagine during difficult times so i think i would say really a strong financial situation and really going through the expenses through the books on a regular basis really prepares you as much as possible for any crisis situation then the second point is uh, what can be implemented to boost the business after this pandemic. I think we said it a bit earlier, really maybe reducing the rates is maybe not the right uh, strategy. However, uh, increasing the added value to the guests, coming up with some creative packages, uh, really positions you on the market and helps you to regain some market share when the crisis is over. So really this is um, you know innovative ideas um like dining concepts packages etc uh, have to be put in place to differentiate yourself from the competition um, also you can do some new strategic alliances with third-party companies to increase um, the customer visibility um, so you know with airlines with banks with uh, uh, third-party suppliers uh, um, which are not necessarily hospitality related but that target the same customers so really, that's uh, what I would recommend to boost uh, the business after the pandemic. Thank you very much. And again, the outcome from this message, uh, it will be clear that uh, please do care about your cash flow or uh, your financial statement. Uh, some organizations are using a balance sheet. So these are the very important elements in order to understand how your business could be sustainable. And in the same time, please uh, do not uh, give spontaneous uh, discount on your rates. 
more rather than adding value by packaging it and uh, uh, and uh, presenting it in a in a uh, in a good marketing way to your guests. Uh, that's all from our side. The questions uh, which have been addressed, I'll be happy to take the questions from the panel, uh, which uh, our participants already made it. Um, so one of the questions uh, from uh, Mr. Suleiman Mamadov uh, is follows. How can hotels, particularly mid-class ones, transform the current crisis into the opportunity? I think it's uh, more has been answered, but uh, again, uh, we will be uh, uh, answering in the same way. Transformation related from the two things in any uh, crisis. One of them, uh, preparation operationally, uh, and second, uh, preparation uh, in financially. Uh, some hotels have uh, both problems. Some hotel have uh, only one problem. I do hope that the hotel doesn't have any cash flow problem at all. So uh, in another words, that uh, Hotel do have some deposits. Hotel do have some uh, money in their bank account in order to create the opportunities. Opportunities cannot be created from nothing. You need to invest. You need to invest, even if it's a little bit thing, even if it's a little bit idea, as uh, Mr. Schneider had uh, informed before. So I'll give you uh, one example that, uh, as you know, um, Pool and beach is had been closed. It had been restricted by the uh, government. Uh, as as far as I know, in many countries, are the same regulation. However, uh, residents, uh, people, they do miss the pool, having a pool. So, what could be done if, in your hotel, if you do have a certain space with the certain room categories, you could able to create the privacy for your own guest and to create a uh, inflatable pool, which is temporary pool to, for your guests as an opportunity. This could be one of the option that could be done. I'm not saying that it should be done. Again, it's the case to case. Second, uh, as an example, what I can uh, uh, mention is the uh, operation to be, to be prepared. As you know, COVID-19 is available. So when the guest uh, is going to be back, they need to ensure, or we need to ensure for them, that health and safety is has been taken care. So everywhere you need to uh, put the mask, a camera, a gel, social distance. These are the cost. Unfortunately, it's a cost. And in order to have this cost, you need to invest. You need to change your regulations, new standards. Uh, if you remember uh, in our um, uh, last webinar, uh, I had showed you the video from the Emirates Airlines, which they had invested, even the airport, they had invested. Uh, for them is, uh, as you know, airport business is the mass business. So they need to make uh, money from the uh, quantity, not from the quality. So they had able to transform and they could able uh, to invest in their cameras, in the social distance, to make sure that uh, everyone is had been tested. Everyone is uh, has been guided. So even for the airports, it's the uh, big cost. So I do suggest that taking the opportunity. It depend on the uh, your cash flow, and it depend on the technical and the physical uh, opportunities that your hotel may be. Your hotel could be a business hotel. Your hotel could be a leisure hotel. If your space, physical space, technical assignments are helping you, please, you could able even to call for iftar, uh, which is uh, which we are in the Ramadan. But you could, uh, you should have to uh, put the social distance at least two meters from the, each table. This is possible, but how to do that? This is marketing, operation, and the marketing. Operationally, you be you have to be prepared, and marketing-wise, you need to show it as well. We will go to the uh, second question uh, from Jehun, my colleague. He is asking, thank you very much, Mr. Christoph, for your insight. Quick question. What should 
property do every year to secure more cash? That's a very good question. So we don't have a crisis like this leading us to unpaid or uh, uh, for large employees. So this is more about uh, sustaining the uh, <coughs> cash flows. <clears throat> well, I think, um, again, uh, the most important is really to run the operation success successfully um, and to make sure that you get some good profit out of the hotel by, um, you know, saving wherever you can without affecting the uh, guest experience. Um, and then really every hotel is different. You know, certain hotels are fully financed. Some hotels have loans. Some hotels have uh, different ownerships, uh, etc. So it's really case by case. Um, but uh, definitely keeping a close eye on your PNL on a monthly basis um, at the end of each month and really drawing the conclusions of uh, the spending during the month. Preparing for also for the more difficult months. It's very rare to have a hotel in a country or in a region where every month uh, you you know you get fantastic results so you need to get um, to accrue also for the slower months let's say in Dubai for instance is for the summer months where the occurrence is a bit lower and the rates are a bit more affordable um, in order to be ready for the next quarters uh, at the end of the year so that's also something that needs to be done uh, do your accruals on a regular basis. Don't uh, think that you don't need to do it and that uh, you can spend the money when the situation arises. Accruing effectively is also a good way of safeguarding and putting aside some expenses which might occur um, during good times and definitely necessary during more difficult times. So these are my recommendations really in order to safeguard a healthy cash flow in the hotel. Uh, the outcome... Uh of this answer and I will add a little bit uh, on uh, what Mr. Schneider had uh, added. Uh, we do see the different owners and we do see the uh, different uh, fortunate or unfortunate um, behaviors. These behaviors are uh, reflecting to the uh, hotel operation. Hotel management's role is to make sure that if you have a good month today, if you had closed your P&L good in uh, let's say in the month of uh, April, it doesn't mean that the profit have to be uh, transferred to the owners. You have to wait at least a quarter, uh, one quarter you need to wait, three months to make sure that uh, the businesses in the future will not penetrate your profitability. And of course, it's the hotel's management role to give an explanation. Uh, what kind of explanation could be? Uh, for example, in the current crisis, it's very hard to collect the debts. As you know, something in the finance uh, known as the IR aging, account receivable aging. This aging is not easy to collect. I mean, uh, hotel is not the debitor collections. Hotel is not the, uh, the bank collector, you know. You can able to ask, you can go to the uh, relationship wise you can ask from yourselves from your finance from your relationship people in order to collect but it doesn't mean that if something go wrong you you can do um, you could able to spoil this relationship no the worst case scenario you could uh, open the legal action against it and that's it but if let's say uh, this account is not have been paid uh, automatically it becomes the doubtful debt, which in the future creates a bad debt, which means it's an expense for the PL, which means it's diluting your profit, which means that it will be less profit. In these cases, uh, a smart financial person, why I say smart, because they need to do the forecast every single week, not months, not quarter. Every single week, you need to do the uh, forecasting. By this forecasting, you could able to see uh, how your costs are changing, how your revenue is coming, and to be prepared, at least for coming three months, six months, or a year. You could able to practice that. Uh, please, I do advise that to do the balance sheet reconciliation. This is uh, in for a very uh, useful tool that, obviously, it's annoying. Obviously, nobody likes it. Obviously, it's a... Uh, it's a big paperwork, 
But if you will start over and make it as a good best practice, uh, for the next uh, balance sheet reconcil reconciliation, you could finish it within a half an hour. So balance sheet reconciliation is a very important tool that you have to do all the time. Uh, financial forecasting, revenue management wise, revenue forecasting, some they are calling uh, commercial forecasting. So this forecast will able to explain to you and to your organization and to your owners that what do we expect during the crisis or post crisis. So this will be very important tool that uh, you need to follow in the future. Um, other question we will go through. Um, um, by Mr. Togro Jabrailov, he's saying salam. Uh, maybe it will be a little off the topic, but anyway, he is asking the question. Uh, what do you advise the hotel tenants? Do hotel tenants have a chance to continue the tenancy as, as uh, to finish at all? Do you recommend to work with the owners as a partners? This is more about, um, uh, I believe, uh, renting out uh, one of the pool option, renting the hotel, if I'm not mistaken, renting the hotel to the uh, third parties. Uh, is this could be a good scenario for the uh, in the industry? I could able to respond to uh, Toro's uh, question. Yes, it can be. Uh, in the U.S. St uh, standards, in the U.S. Uh, guideline and it's also recommended by the Cornell University. This is the one of the options that can be, but there is there are many complications. It's very very uh, rapidly spreaded in U.S. Very rapidly spreaded in U.S. As uh, I could able also to see that majority of the hotels had been rented out or outsourced or given to the third party management company. And owners are just uh, receiving the lump sum amount, a fixed amount. This is very uh, rapidly spread in U.S. Now, is this could be in your particular country or in any other? I, I would say that again, uh, need to make some financial analysis in order to understand. As I know, specifically in Azerbaijan, uh, yes, I know some few hotels that have been given as the uh, outsourcing. Uh, how is it uh, effective or not? I think uh, it's very early to say because nobody have the hist history and uh, Jae Hoon in our next session he could able to uh, demonstrate you for that uh, demand uh, versus supply and the pricing strategy. Is it the good option or not? Well, Again, you need to make some analysis. You cannot say 100% yes or no, but as an answer, yes, it is possible. And yes, it's happening currently in US. Uh, what are the implications? Well, in this current scenario, if I'm outsourcing and I could not able to pay my rents, uh, automatically it goes to the force majeure and automatically it goes to the uh, termination of the contract. Now, how does it profitable for the owner? Yes or no? This is a big question mark. Um, another question by, uh, forgive me if I'm going to pronounce it uh, wrong, Mr. Hamisi, uh, thank you Mr. Schneider for your insight. Based on the uh, measures which are being put in the place on how to handle COVID-19, having less people in the restaurant, reorganizing the checking area, social distan distancing, just name a few do you think that leisure guests would carry on traveling due the measures which are putting in the place yes i think uh, people will be traveling again um maybe not as much as before but if i can if i can take our particular example here in dubai already we're getting some bookings and it's positive to see that October, November, December, we are getting, starting to get some pickup during this, this month. So it means that certain countries are really looking forward to travel again. Some are our very regular guests who can't wait to travel again to find their favorite hotel. Some others are new guests. So I think we will see it maybe not from every country. Some countries are maybe a bit more conservative. 
and some countries are more used to go through crisis and um, are more resilient to you know to experience again what they had before so um, we, it's, it's positive to see that already we're getting some bookings for the last uh, Q4, Q4 of uh, 2020. Of course, the numbers are not great, uh, but we hope that closer to the date after the summer, we will see some um, occupancy levels uh, rising during the last few months and in the beginning of 2021. Uh, just to add on from my side, uh, yes, it's possible. Yes. People are extremely waiting to go to the leisure. It's not going to be as it used to be before, this is for sure. However, uh, this will be for us a new practice and new history that we need to make out of it as a good standard for the safety and the, uh, for the safety of all, for our guests. Um, I'll pick up one more question. Uh, you have to forgive me as of, because of our time. Uh, so we'll finalize it. Um, the last question is from Mr. Ramin Aliyev. Uh, Mr. Schneider, thank you for an insightful discussion. Quick question. Recently, it had been started that when the industry start talking off in the post-pandemic period, occupancy performance of the properties will be the main factor of the success rather than ADR. What do you think about it? Meanwhile, uh, high occupancy does show that people travel. Would it be smart move for properties uh, to keep decreasing their rates to get business? Or how would properties keep decent prices for a win-win situation? This question, uh, my dear Ramin, uh, I can answer for you and Mr. Schneider as well. But I would urge you to listen for our next topic, that which will happen on the uh, next week. Uh, by uh, my colleague, Mr. Jay Horn. He will be able to give you the uh, insights and also show the factors <coughs> how the pricing strategy, occupancy ADR and ref bar are changing during the uh, pandemic and after pandemic and how it could increase. Uh, I do thank uh, Mr. Schneider for coming for our uh, session. I do hope that it was interesting for everyone. I do hope that uh, if you have any uh, comments or any questions, you can post it on our Facebook and LinkedIn page and as well as Instagram page. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Schiller, for coming. Thank you for your invitation. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Just for our participants, I would like to inform that our next uh, topic will be uh, AI and BI in the revenue management. AI is artificial intelligent, BI is the business intelligent uh, in the revenue management. will be hosted by my colleague, Jehon Nesabadi on, on uh, May 9th, which is uh, 9th of May, which is uh, one week after, same date, same time from 8 to 9. Meanwhile, please uh, subscribe, follow us in the Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn pages. We'll be happy uh, to see your thoughts, comments, and the questions related to the, any, uh, any, any inquiries that you may have. Again, thank you very much for your attention. Hope it was interesting and beneficial from, for all of you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you.